this afternoon. My name is Charles Gashahi, and I'm studying in for the ASO Secretary General, Dr. Nsegmana Hemogin, who is not able to join us for because of other uh, commitments that were beyond his control. Uh, I want to first of all say that uh, from what we have interpretation uh, for this webinar, and this webinar is being hosted by ASO and co-hosted by Tanzania Bureau of Standards. Uh, this webinar is the 33rd webinar uh, that is being hosted in collaboration with the TBS, that's Tanzania Bureau of Standards. And this is after some decision was leashed during the last uh, council meeting, sometimes in uh, Ethiopia, that now uh, webinars, as webinars will be hosted with the uh, collaboration with the member states. Uh, the first webinar, we did it in January this year in collaboration with the Kenya Bureau of Standards. The second one, we did it in February in collaboration with the Cameroon. The third one, uh, we did it in March uh, in collaboration with the Uganda Bureau of Standards. And last month, we did host another one in collaboration with the uh, Ghana Standards Authority. So uh, before I dive into the introduction of this uh, webinar, I would like to just call upon our co-host, uh, Tanzania, the Director General of Tanzania, Dr. Adumani, to just say a few words, and then I can uh, proceed uh, with the uh, introduction. Thank you very much, Dr. Adumani. A uh, few welcome. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Gashai. Uh, I was asking uh, Philip whether he can allow Dr. Athman Ingenya to, to join because I was uh, trying to contact him, but he is in the waiting room. So uh, probably, uh, Philip, you can assist us to allow. Uh, Dr. Ngenya to join us and give uh, remarks uh, for the for the session. Hey, Leona, can you hear? Can you hear me? Uh, that. Uh, um, Dr. Othman Genya has joined yes. in with which name because we can't see him. Uh, okay, okay, he has joined using the DG. Uh, so let me let me let me let me follow up. So we welcome uh, Dr. Genya, the Director General for Tanzania Bureau of Standards, to say a few words before I proceed with the introduction of the webinar. So as we wait for Dr. Genya to come in, uh, like I said, he's the Director General of uh, Tanzania Bureau of Standards. And uh, he has participated in various regional and international standard board meetings, including the East Africa uh, Standards uh, Committee, ASO, and representing uh, uh, Tanzania. Uh, he is also a member of the Tanzania Chemical Society and founder member and current chairman of University of Dar es Salaam. 
uh, labor and engineers and the scientists association member of network So it's a member of a network of users of science equipment of the East Africa, East and Southern Africa, member of the East, Afri East and Southern Africa Laboratory Managers Association, and member of Material Science and Solar Energy Network for Eastern and Southern Africa uh, Tanzanian chapter. So he has conducted uh, research including cashew at shell liquid as an alternative corrosion inhibitor, standards on the coal gold agglomeration process for the extraction of gold by small scale miners to reduce pollution by mercury, investigation of gold recovery efficiency of locally available carbonaceous materials in the mercury free coal gold agglomeration process and the use of agricultural byproducts and coal in the production of activated carbons uh, for the application in gold recovery. So Dr. Genya holds a PhD in chemistry from the Sadwish Program University of Dar es Salaam, Imperial College of uh, London, an MSc in Analytical Chemistry, University of Salford in UK, and a BSc uh, honors from General uh, chemical and botany from the University of Dar es Salaam and higher certificate in laboratory science and technology, Safford College of Technology of the UK. So we welcome uh, Dr. Genya to give a few words before we proceed with the webinar. Uh, hello, uh, uh, Mr. Kashai. I was talking to Dr. Ngenya. Yes, he had uh, some challenge, but he's uh, trying to fine tune the connectivity. Uh, maybe in two minutes, he will be with us to give us the, the remarks on the session. So uh, while, while we are uh, still in the floor of introduction, as you have uh, just completed uh, uh, giving us the, the brief, the bio of Dr. Ngenya. So I hope uh, he will be with us in, in two minutes or so, so as to, uh, to be with us here in the, in the, in the, in the room. Uh, while while we are waiting for Dr. Ngenya, I hope uh, uh, our panelists, uh, Dr. Ashura, you are prepared for a presentation. No, Dr. No, Ashura, no, 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 not yet. Uh, what we wanted was just uh, Dr. Ngenya to as the co-host to welcome uh, members to the webinar. But uh, I'll have I'll proceed with the introduction and then. At an appropriate time, then you can be able to uh, invite members to uh, to the webinar. So uh, yes, I'll yes, yes. I, yeah. I, yeah. I wanted just to, to 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 be prepared for them to be prepared, not to to to, to I mean to go for a presentation, but at least to be prepared. Yes. Uh, to be I mean to set up their equipment uh, for 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 the for the session today. I think is is he already? I can see the name of of, of Dr. Ngenya is, is there. Oh, so he has joined already. Yeah, yeah he the name of, of maybe you can hear from me. Okay, then, uh, Mr. Gashai, uh, this is your turn. Yeah, uh, I've seen I've seen Dr. Ngenya, the, the Director General of TBS. 
uh, has joined us. So, Gashai, please okay, you take you, the read. Okay, thank you, Tanzania. I'll proceed with the with the introduction. Oh, Dr. Ganya is there. Okay, if Dr. Ganya is there, please, uh, we give you a minute or so to welcome the members as the co-host for this webinar. Dr. Adumani, are you in? I think we could proceed and uh, then he joins in when he's able. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, at an appropriate time, we shall be able to invite uh, Dr. Athumani to welcome the members uh, to this webinar. So uh, before we dive in into the webinar with the theme of standards and uh, uh, SMEs, I would like to give a brief introduction First of all, on the African Organization for Standardization, ASO. Uh, this is a, a membership organization, an intergovernmental organization that was established uh, in 1977 by the of Organization of African Unity, currently the AU at UNECA, with the founding conference held at the ACRA International Center on 21st, with 21st founding uh, founding member states now also uh, uh, has the principal mandate of uh, harmonization of standards and operating a conformity assessment uh, system that will address uh, technical barriers to trade in trade in africa that is essentially facilitating trade in africa uh, to increase of course trade among ourselves and also uh, beyond. It is a membership organization with current members of uh, current members, uh, 43 members uh, that are drawn from uh, the national standards bodies or where a national standard body does not exist, then the department that deals with standards and trade in that uh, organization, uh, that, that members, member country. Uh, now, to appreciate the issue of uh, the importance okay. of standards and conformity assessment systems, uh, the African Continental Free Trade Area, uh, the, the agreement when it was developed in Chapter 6 of, its, of this particular agreement, it is actually uh, dedicated to the issue of uh, standards. And uh, Article 6 uh, of the party states that uh, uh, develop and promote the adoption ed, or adoption of international standards, promote uh, the adoption of standards developed by ASO and AFSEC. And where a, relev a relevant uh, international standard required to facilitate trade does not exist, then request ASO and AFSEC to develop uh, the required standard to facilitate trade between the state parties. I would like to add here that uh, in coordination of this, uh, ASO has signed uh, an MOU uh, with the uh, AF AFCFTA uh, to the point that uh, for purposes of facilitating trade, then only African standards uh, will be recognized. 
Uh, the theme today uh, is on SMEs and how they can be helped through uh, standards. And uh, we noticed that SMEs are very important, uh, not often only in, uh, in Africa, but also world over, as they are actually the ones that they represent uh, over 90% of the businesses and they will normally employ uh, of a 50% of the, uh, of, of the employees uh, worldwide. Uh, in many areas, uh, in many countries, and especially uh, in the development of what we call uh, uh, vision uh, development documents, uh, the SMEs actually have been uh, identified as agents of growth uh, in, in, in many countries. That is creating jobs, uh, and creating uh, wealth and employment within the, 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 the various countries. So uh, small and medium enterprises uh, play a major role in most economies. And in Africa, uh, they have emerged as the agents and drivers of economic growth and global connectivity, like I've observed. Uh, they, account, they account majority of businesses worldwide and are important create, create contributors to job creation and global economic development. And therefore, as a member states, uh, there is a, a motivation to actually uh, focus more on uh, the SMEs so that uh, they can be assisted uh, to uh, actually uh, play their rightful role in the economic development of uh, member states within Africa and beyond. So uh, because of their importance, uh, the, both in Africa and also outside, there have been uh, some interventions uh, because of uh, the work, uh, the role that they play, uh, both in Africa and uh, also outside. Uh, uh, first of all, we have some statistics that uh, uh, show this. Uh, in the European Union, uh, we see that they contribute to 99% uh, and then 66.9% of the uh, employment. Uh, and this translates to about 88.8 .8 million jobs and of uh, 3.6 trillion euros in value addition, value added. In Africa, the SME sector accounts for 90% of the, of, of the overall enterprises, of which 70 to 8% are micro and small enterprises. And you can see for yourselves the figures, including also in the Gulf Cooperation countries where SMEs are estimated to account for uh, 22 percent of the GDP, uh, relatively low share when compared to other parts of the. But the main thing here is that SMEs play a very important role in the economic development of any uh, country. So to support the SMEs in terms of uh, even creating awareness on the work that they do, uh, various initiatives have been. Uh, started uh, both at uh, international and also uh, uh, at a regional level. Uh, towards this, uh, under the United Nations, uh, they have uh, initiated the Africa Industrialization Day that is celebrated every year on the 20th November. This one, the, that day has been dedicated to Africa Industrialization Day. We also have uh, the United Nations uh, 2030 uh, SDGs, where 17 goals and 169 targets focuses on sustainable development. And to be a bit precise, uh, goal number eight on the sustainable development goals uh, is uh, promote sustained inclusion and sustainable economic growth full and productive and for employment and decent work for all. 
goal number one seeks to reduce at least by half the proportion of men, women, children of all ages living in poverty and in all dimensions according to the national definitions. And goal number nine uh, seeks to build a resilient infrastructure, promote sustainable industrialization and foster information. Uh, another initiative is the third industrial development decade for Africa, EDA, which celebrated, which was uh, on 25th July 2016. The UN adopted resolution ARIS 70 of 2093, which proclaimed the period 2016 to 2025 as the third industrial development decade for Africa, which highlights the need for inclusive and sustainable industrialization. Another initiative was on 27th June as micro, small and medium enterprises day. And this was done during the 74th plenary held on the 16th April 2017 that declared 27th June as a micro, small and medium sized enterprises day. So these were UN initiatives uh, just to promote and highlight uh, the issues of uh, SMEs. On African level, we have the Africa Agenda 2063 uh, with seven aspirations, uh, including the, the, what we could normally say Africa we want. So uh, this one, uh, aspiration number one says, a prosperous Africa based on inclusive growth and sustainable development uh, to promote social dialogue, sectoral and productivity plans at regional com commodity value chains to support implementation of industrial policies at all levels. We also have the African Continental Free Trade Area, the AFCFTA, uh, which you promote uh, market of products within the continent. And uh, currently uh, it has it to uh, integrate a market of about 1.3 billion people uh, with a potential to about 2.2 billion people by 2050. Uh, under this, we have uh, the action, the plan of action for accelerated uh, industrial development of Africa, IDA. I had mentioned about it earlier, the program for infrastructure development, PIDA, the African uh, mining, Africa mining vision, the African Union small uh, enterprise uh, strategy master plan for 2017, uh, that was uh, adding 2021. And then also we have uh, the 1989 OAU declaration on the 20th November as the Africa Industrialization Day. Also in 2022, the African Union Summit on Industrialization and Economic Diversification was convened under the theme of industrializing Africa. So in all these uh, activities and this uh, during the celebrations of these days, uh, the issue of uh, industrialization is highlighted and like we said earlier on, you cannot industrialize without uh, the SMEs. Now, the issue of uh, the importance of SMEs cannot be overemphasized because uh, we take cognizance like uh, cognitions of uh, when we had the COVID-19 pandemic, which disrupted a lot of uh, supply chains within the continent. Uh, it was many countries relied on the SMEs in terms of uh, products and also delivery of the service. So SMEs, uh, we learned a lot from this uh, COVID-19 that we have to develop our own industries and enterprises for us to survive. Because what do we do if such a thing happens again and there is no movement outside the borders or that? So SMEs played a very important role uh, in as far as uh, maintaining uh, the, the, the member member countries uh, with and supply of goods 
which could not be able uh, could not be able to be gotten from outside. Now, as we develop, we find that uh, in terms of uh, the digitalization, uh, a lot of opportunities are are now available uh, for the SMEs, and we need to support the SMEs uh, with skills and uh, technologies to uh, take advantage of this. So uh, part of this webinar, uh, some of these issues will be highlighted by one of the presenters. So we now look at uh, the role of standards uh, in SMEs. And we notice that uh, when it comes to manufacturing of goods and having them accepted uh, in the market, uh, it will not matter whether products and services are being supplied uh, by SMEs or large manufacturing enterprises. They have to meet the minimum requirements. That is, uh, the products have to be safe and they protect, they have to be quality products. And therefore, uh, the issue of standards come into play in helping the SMEs, first of all, to produce competitive products, uh, and then also assure the quality of these products uh, through uh, compliance with these standards. So uh, standards will help uh, SMEs, first of all, to produce competitive products that will ensure environment, health, and safety of uh, the citizen, and also to access markets, uh, both locally and also internationally. And therefore, they will play a very important role in the growth of SMEs. And also, we can add that certification uh, based on the established standards will also now play a critical role, because this is, this is the one that you uh, actually uh, give assurance uh, that the products or services produced by the SMEs uh, are actually meeting the relevant, uh, uh, <clears throat> relevant standards. And to this, we'd like to say that uh, at ASO, we have developed uh, many standards that uh, even address the unique products that sometimes we have from the continent because of the various resources that we do have. And also, uh, we are promoting sustainability standards through uh, equilibrium standards or sustainability standards. And we do offer uh, certification to the ECOMAC of Africa, uh, an environment and sustainability level. I am a sustainability level to those products and services that comply with African uh, sustainability standards. So I did mention earlier on that uh, standards will help in facilitating market access and also ensuring the issue of uh, health and safety and also the issue of fitness, interchangeability, variety reduction and compatibility uh, during the manufacturing process and their utilization. Standards and their compliance system remain crucial to facilitating manufacturing and market access. And we use standards, uh, use of standards connected to upgrading and modernized productivity, which improves SME competitive, competitiveness and signals higher quality, both of which are essential for cross-border trade and foreign direct investment. So like I said, uh, we have harmonized standards at uh, ASO that promote the involvement of SMEs in industry and standardization project uh, processes. Uh, we have uh, <clears throat> we have uh, a, st a standard on uh, made in Africa. Uh, made in Africa qualification criteria. Uh, and then we also have, these are some of the programs that uh, we are having at ASO, the issue of harmonization of standards. We also create awareness uh, 
during, of course, such a Yeah, I hope uh, Gacha is uh, making the slides uh, proper. So we'll just come again here. So I wanted just to very briefly talk about the objectives for this webinar uh, to create awareness on the importance of strategic role of SMEs to enhance better understanding on the role of uh, standardization in enhancing SMEs competitiveness and challenges to understand the goal and continental blueprints for promoting SMEs to enhance better understanding and the importance of made in Africa and enhance understanding on the role of ASO and TBS in promoting, uh, promoting standardization activities to activate, uh, to motivate government and policymakers for better policies that promote SMEs in Africa and to promote a uh, better understanding of opportunities for the e-commerce and digital economy. And towards this, we have lined up uh, panelists who are going to guide us in uh, uh, understanding more about uh, the law and then also how the SMEs can be assisted. So I want now to call upon uh, the DG of uh, Tanzania Bureau of Standards uh, to welcome uh, the guests as a co-host, and then we proceed with the webinar. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you very much, Mr. Gachai, for your uh, long talk. Do you hear me, panelists? I mean, members there. Yeah, we can hear you. We, we do hear, we do hear, please. Okay, that's good. It's better to get, you know, uh, clear that everybody hears me before and that's going. Anyway, my name is Dr. Yusuf Ngenya. I'm the Director General of TBS. Uh, I'm sorry I joined late. I don't know whether introduction was is important for this moment or should we continue? Uh, DG, very lucky that uh, Gachai uh, did introduce you. But you okay. can uh, briefly introduce yourself more, but Gachai uh, did the best to introduce you when you were uh, trying to connect. And then I think we should move on if that is the case. Huh? Okay, I'm the co-chair of this uh, session, which is the third session of the ASO uh, webinar, monthly webinar. Uh, my as a, as a, as a co-chair, a, a, a co what uh, uh, my, my 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 duty here is I think is to give a token note straight before before I mean we are short of time. So uh, uh, the topic, as I said by Mr. Gachai there, is the recognizing the vital role of SMEs as engines for sustainable and inclusive economic growth and need for increasing their competitiveness in Africa through standardization. Now in Tanzania, the small and medium uh, scale industries, uh, I, mean, I mean enterprises have a much wider, I mean, in fact, we, we, we synony synonymously uh, also include the, 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 the micro. So when I say SME, which means, I mean, a small, medium in Tanzania, we also include the micro. So it is synonymous to MSEE. -E. You know, we, we have the S for micro starting there before the small. So 
Uh, in Tanzania, the, the, the SMEs cover uh, non-farming economic activities, mainly manufacturing, uh, mining, commerce, and services. The Tanzania government has taken different efforts to develop these SMEs. These efforts can be envisaged through the establishment of national small industrial cooperation and the small scale industrial development organization, that is NSIC and SIDO, which is CIDO. And the other organization, also including TBS, is also in, among them. But the, the government is also, you know, a, a, we have also, the government is also encouraged financial institutions, banks, and microfinance institutions, and the like in efforts to, to develop or to enhance these SMEs. Now, according to the survey published by the Ministry of Industries, uh, Ministry of uh, Investment, Trade and Industry. Uh, in 2012, there were over 3 million uh, SMEs in Tanzania, including Zanzibar, of course, 96.4% of which are sole proprietors, meaning that a business owned by an individual without company registration. Now, these SMEs in Tanzania account for 30% of the country's GDP and comprise the majority of the employment. Now, in joining the efforts of government initiative, Tanzania Bureau of Standard assist SMEs by, by, by providing standardization, quality assurance, capacity building, market access, and consumer protection, and police advocacy services. These efforts aim to enhance the competitiveness of these SMEs and contribute generally to the uh, economic development of the country in general. Now, we also provide, as TBSC, we provide quality assurance services such as product certification, testing, and inspection for free, especially those micro, micro uh, enterprises. These services help SME to ensure that their products meet the required quality standards, both domestically and for export. Certification from Tanzania Bureau of Standard adds credibility to the products and expanding market opportunities for these SMEs. Now, TBS also uh, assists these SMEs in assessing local and international markets. The Bureau provides information on export requirements, conformity assessment, procedures, and relevant standards for different markets. markets. This guidance helps these SMEs to align their product with international standards and the regulation, thereby facilitating export opportunities. So the government of Tanzania has created a conducive environment for SMEs to grow by providing access to finance on the other, on the other side, which is the key. Without finances, there's no growth to these SMEs. And you know, there is sometimes it's very difficult for them to be, you know, to get loans from banks. But the government is, is encouraging banks and, you know, facilitating banks to provide access to finance to these SMEs, which is a key to growth of and expansion of these SMEs. Now, through small enterprises in Tanzania, rarely have, but however, though I say, though, these SMEs enterprises in Tanzania are really, I don't know whether other parts of Africa say, but they really have financial statement, which is a big block state, I mean, a big barrier. They don't have financial statement. However, few of them are able to comprehensively explain their business, you know, uh, using business activities using, you know, data. So that is the situation in Tanzania, and uh, particularly in TBS, uh, you have seen how much TBS is, is contributing uh, to these SMEs to make sure that they grow, and you know later about to be large enterprise, large you know enterprises. Thank you so much, members, uh, and uh, may I submit my, my 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 short note, you know? So back to to to. Uh, to to the chair to okay thank you uh director general of tbs uh 
uh, I think uh, I would like to uh, send back to Gachai if you have uh, anything to comment. Uh, thank you, moderator. Uh, at this point, I will want to encourage you that you continue now because of time. And then if there are any observations to or any other comments, they can be done at the end of the, uh, the webinar. Thank you very much. Uh, please proceed. Hello, moderator. You are muted. Muted. <laughs> Mr. Moderator. You are muted. I'm muted. I'm saying Yona, Yona is muted, yes. Mm. Oh, yes, uh, Dr. Ngenya, the, the Director General of TBS, you are welcome. Uh, you wanted to comment something? No, we were telling you you are muted. Ah, okay, thanks. So uh, I would like to now uh, welcome uh, uh, please uh, also secretariat you can also uh, try to uh, to share the presentation for the for the panelists to be prepared to present uh, now i would like to welcome uh, mr gisori uh, to present the matter on the uh, med in Africa quality criteria, making the SME and made in Africa product competitive and recognized in Africa and global value chain. So I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Gisoli to present the the matter. I mean the theme for for the for the for the for the panelists. I mean for the uh, members to understand and uh, reserve the comment when uh, the time for, 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 for comment will come. So, Mr. Sorry, you are welcome. Yeah, thank you very much, Juno. Thank you very much, uh, DGA TBS, and thank you, Mr. Ashai. Um, I will go straight to my presentation and I uh, will. And not go over the statistics that I think have been given, uh, including the establishment of RSO, which has been given. Um, of course, taking note that RSO is uh, an intergovernmental body. Uh, so, meaning, of course, uh, countries are represented uh, officially by their national standards bodies. So, the essence of RSO is to facilitate intra-African trade and global trade uh, through harmonized standards and conformity assessment systems. So those are the key aims. And to achieve that, we look at uh, the various sectors that uh, we can deal with. Uh, fortunately, you have defined what SMEs mean. And we need to take into account, I think from the Director General of TBS, he did mention other areas that normally people don't look at at sun or mining as SMEs. And uh, it's a wide ranging uh, kind of uh, spectrum where you, you find SMEs playing a role. Um, sometimes these SMEs are in towns and some are in rural areas. Now, from those statistics, I think it's clear uh, that most of the businesses that we actually interact with are SMEs. When you are going to the shops, you're interacting with an SME. Uh, when you are going to the small you know, butcheries, uh, eateries, uh, the people who are selling uh, the textiles and you know, leather, footwear, those are SMEs. So the majority of the businesses we interact with are SMEs. And uh, that's why we need to be paying attention to how we handle them, to how we make them uh, utilize the standards of conformity assessment systems so that they can improve the way they do their businesses. So if you are looking at the developed economies and you are being told that 
98% of their enterprises are SMEs. It is something that we need to understand that if these SMEs are driving those very big economies, then they have a big role and they have a big space to do the same uh, within the African countries. And therefore it is important that we don't neglect them, we don't leave them out uh, in uh, providing the key services uh, of conformity assessment and standardization so that they can fulfill their mandates. So I will not go into the statistics because you've been given those statistics, but I'll look at the barriers that these SMEs um, uh, find. And you'll find that uh, inherently because of their sizes, uh, they face a lot of challenges. You know, the company related barriers because they are small and therefore you find that their human resource base, their financial resource base uh, is quite difficult has been confirmed by uh, the, uh, the TBS uh, Director General, uh, you find that these people sometimes do not have bank accounts. Uh, of course, their current digital um, banking systems that have come on board, and therefore those are helping. These people, the, the SMEs also have product related barriers that they cannot sometimes meet the quality, they cannot adapt their products to their needs, constant changes of the needs of their customers. Then we have industry led barriers because they are small. Uh, their competition is not enhanced when they face bigger com competitors, those who can produce in large numbers and leverage on volumes to uh, you know, sell in volumes and make profits. So our SMEs cannot meet that. There are those market barriers that we face because uh, sometimes uh, people don't want to deal with uh, small traders. They want the big houses uh, that manufacture the, the, the textiles that or the clothes that they wear or the, the footwear that they use. And therefore we find that customers perceive SMEs as being unable to meet their requirements. Then there are also procedural barriers uh, where you find uh, they, they do not have the mechanisms to comply with the various um, government procedures, the government, the various test procedures. And I'm happy that TBS is providing these services are free of charge. And that's a motivation that we find uh, that the government or government institutions should be giving. So the macro environment you find, of course, is that uh, sometimes government policies come into play. And when they come into play, um, they do not uh, re recognize the kind of um, constraint that the SMEs face. And therefore, you find a, a government policy that comes up and the requirements are such onerous that sometimes they can't meet. So they cannot compete uh, effectively. And uh, so if we are going to be competitive, then our government needs to look at if you are passing legislation that requires a lot of investments, uh, then they will impact uh, negatively on the SMEs. And therefore those are things that we need to look at. The role of standards in all this is uh, basically to look at how uh, then do we improve the environment in which the SMEs work. Uh, you know, sometimes they don't pay attention to the standards because they think they are small. And therefore, there is the issue of sustainable raw materials, uh, good quality of raw materials, looking at the production processes, uh, innovation, ensuring safety of the final product and such. So these are some of the things that we encourage that if they, they utilize standards, then they are able to meet this. Um, the, if we are listing, we are going to list the benefits uh, of the SMEs uh, using standards, of course, it's improvement of the quality of the products and services they produce, uh, increased competitiveness, and ability to demonstrate the quality of the products or services. More importantly, I'll put it this way, that uh, the key thing at the moment that we are trying to emphasize is that SMEs, if they comply with standards, they are able to be integrated into regional and global value chains in that they can start participating in the production of intermediate goods or some small scale uh, products which are needed to enter into a big global value chain. If it is pairs, for example, they can do that. If it is to aggregate uh, products and be able to demonstrate consistent quality of and safety of the products, they can be integrated into regional and global value chains. Currently, if you follow the global value chains, you, you realize that over 70% of the products traded in the 
world actually fall within uh, the integrated uh, global value chains. And therefore it's important that we uh, try and utilize standards which can give us um, an entry into the global value chains. Uh, standards as an, a driver for the SME economy, we look at it improved performance, coordination and productivity. There's greater focus on business objectives and customers' expectations so that we don't have people waking up to say, I know people will be eating my eggs and therefore I can cook them uh, whichever way I want because these are hopeless people, uh, people that they need this. Uh, you'll be surprised that someone else will come on board and perhaps offer better service and quality and overtake your businesses. So opening the, the complying with the standards opens a new market opportunities while keeping a satisfied customer customers who are existing to be satisfied. Uh, there is a possibility of certification and registration. And then there's opportunity for SMEs to compete on the same basis as larger organizations. So quality sometimes matters and therefore uh, people will uh, be loyal to products uh, which uh, satisfy their quality requirements. How do we get the SMEs to come on board? This, the idea of identifying these SMEs uh, one of the ways that some of the SMEs are assisted is when they come in associations or clusters, and then they face the government to provide them services that are of kind of uniform nature, and therefore they're able to be assisted to trade. Uh, sometimes I find that when governments as, ask organizations or small scale businesses uh, to organize them in clusters, they shy off. Uh, so make the supply side of standards and standardization more easily accessible. Uh, focus on intermediary uh, organizations to bridge the gap between SMEs and standardization world. Uh, facilitating SME consortia to join the bid. Uh, so if you come together, you aggregate and um, you know improve capabilities. You can bid for coming procurement. Uh, you, you know when we are targeting this clusters, it is possible to be supported to be improved by research and uh, development on a continuous uh, basis. Now, the, the, the way to enter into the market also does not need to be uh, a one um, bang kind of approach. We uh, also encourage the maturity model where you start off by improving uh, steadily towards uh, you know, uh, being recognized from level one, where you start organizing yourself, then level two, you become a player. Uh, you get some recognition as a player in the field, uh, organize yourself to the silver level and get to play nationally and regionally. So if you're operating within uh, Kenya or East, uh, Tanzania, you can now start operating beyond Tanzania going to uh, regional markets. Then when you reach level four, you can now go regional and global. Uh, level five, you become excellent, uh, world-class competitiveness. So you gradually grow. You don't do it at a go. And there's a, there are times given. Uh, if it is one year, two years, three years, uh, guided by the standardization organization so that you're able to meet this. So now, well, how are, uh, do, do the SMEs play in the Made, Made in Africa program? Made in Africa program is a program aimed at facilitating us Africa's development by fostering industrialization, improving productive capacities, promoting export diversification, and protecting intellectual property rights in the continent through creating profitable and sustainable regional, continental, and global value chains. So in this case, what we are looking at is we are creating a continental free trade area, and therefore the SMEs need to play a part in this. How they do this is by looking at what they produce, complying with the rules of origin, complying with standards, complying with intellectual property rights, and therefore being able to be traded in Africa as made in Africa products. When they do this, it means that they can go across the borders by utilizing the free movement protocol within the FCFT agreement and be able to trade not just nationally, but across the borders in the continent of Africa. Now that also gives them the ability to collaborate with other cluster-based organizations. So if you're in the agro-processing, you can now coordinate 
with your similar SMEs in another country and be able to either get the raw materials or supply them with intermediate products. And then they can proceed to produce finished goods that you can trade within the continent as made in Africa goods. So that's the essence. So it's one of the first aspirations of the continent is that of having a prosperous, prosperous Africa based on inclusive growth and sustainable development. How you do that? And we believe that SMEs are key to ensuring this inclusive growth. And if we don't provide the kind of um, services uh, that are required to, to grow the SMEs, then we shall have failed in ensuring that we achieve the Agenda 2063, as well as the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. So in order to do this, uh, the Made in Africa has provided the criteria that uh, is to be utilized for the products to conform uh, to be made in Africa. First of all, when we say made in Africa, it means a product that complies with made in Tanzania, made in Kenya, made in Rwanda, made in Ghana. These are the products that we consider as the first entry points. So meaning that at the national levels, we're expecting that countries will start looking at those particular uh, aspects of encouraging national productivity, national SMEs to produce and brand the products as made in their own countries. Now, what are the areas of priority? And we believe that these areas, they are very key. And I'm happy that some of the areas that have been mentioned, of course, by uh, TBS uh, Director General include most of these. In Africa, we know that the competitive areas include agro-processing, forestry and forest products, mineral products, chemicals and pharmaceuticals. Uh, if you are look at chemicals and pharmaceuticals, you are looking at a very broad area. You are looking at products that we utilize on a daily basis. Uh, if it is soaps, nobody can say that they don't use a soap almost every day. Uh, if it, you, know, you are using toothpaste, you are using a lot of these particular things. And some of these things, they are basic chemistry products. And in this continent, we believe that these are products that we can do. Leather and leather products, very important. We host over 20% of the animals that produce hides and skins in the, in the world. And we should be able to utilize the hides and skins uh, to produce the things that we actually utilize without importing a lot of them. We can substitute them. Textiles, the same. Uh, machinery, tools, and equipment, we need to be producing some of this light engineering uh, equipment for farming, for conversion of products, you know, from basic raw materials to intermediate products. Uh, medical devices, some of them are simple to, to produce. And then we have the construction materials, petrochemical products, rubber and plastics, uh, tourism, hospitality, and creative the services are very vibrant sector. And I think we need to, uh, to, to harness as much as possible from that. We have a very competitive environment for tourism, hospitality and creative uh, services. We need to actually look at them in a more serious way rather than thinking sometimes that uh, you know, if it is music, if it is performing arts, that these are just for entertainment. These are also income generating and livelihood activities. Then there's the knowledge-based um, as services, of course, the ICT, the OAT, business process outsourcing, education, we have a lot of uh, capabilities in this. Logistics, we still get our ticketing done in Europe, and I think it is high time that we got these things to be done in the continent. I stop here, uh, moderators, uh, and I look forward to any engagements as necessary. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Ruben Gisori, uh, for your good presentation. You have highlighted uh, so many things, but at least for SME to have to, I mean, to utilize the the digital account they have, uh, so as if possible, then they can uh, use the same to put into to put into uh, audited. A document so as the financial institution can use the same to 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 to, to fund them so yeah that is a that is a good way because uh, nowadays the uh, financial 
financial industry, uh, they have developed into digital form. So we have to use the same. Uh, sorry that I didn't uh, introduce uh, Mr. Gisori, uh, the, the, the biography for Mr. Gisori. Uh, members, uh, Gisori is an also technical director responsible for coordination of technical program with regard to standards, uh, harmonization and conformity assessment systems and resource mobilization. So he's uh, with ALSO. He's already highly experienced on standardization and conformity assessment uh, issues and strategies, strategies and their impact on integration, trade, sustainable economy development, and world uh, global economy. He uh, I don't know if uh, also can you share the the bio please so as I, when I read uh, members can the bio for Gisori I wanted just because I forgot to introduce Gisori yes this is the one so uh, I wanted just to introduce Gisori that uh, he started his standardization uh, profession in 1997 when he joined the Kenya Bureau of Standard as a standard officer responsible for electrotechnical and renewable energy standard. Gisori represented Kenya in harmonization of standards and trade negotiation in the East Africa community and the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa. Whereas he, he contributed to the, uh, to the formulation of the East Africa uh, community standards and quality Assurance, Metrology, and Testing, that is, uh, is EAC SQMT Act of 2006 and COMESA. Uh, Gisori has uh, initiated and contributed to many of also standardization and conformity assessment uh, continental policy document uh, guiding the implementation of also mandate and resource mobilization on the same. Uh, also, Gisori has written uh, uh, policies and strategies, many policies and strategies paper uh, represented in ARUSO in various technical, in, uh, technical international panels on standardization and its impact in sustainable development and in the, continent, in the context of Africa. Uh, Gisori uh, holds a master's in development study and uh, bachelor in electrical and electronics engineering uh, from Jomo Kenyatta uh, University of Agriculture and Technology. And also uh, Gisori now is pursuing a doctorate a degree in, de in development study. So I hope probably this year you'll be graduating the uh, the, 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 the PhD, we hope so. Thank you, uh, Gisori. Uh, and probably also people would want to know exactly uh, the moderator because I didn't introduce myself. Uh, so my name is Yona Africa, I'm, on Pagato. I'm the standard manager at uh, Tanzania Bureau of Standards. And also, uh, I worked in, 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 in Tanzania Bureau of Standard for uh, 17 years. And currently uh, I'm also SMC chair and member of the also SMC. Uh, uh, you know, also SMC, they are the one supervising the formulation of standard, which Gisori was referring to that basically even the uh, Gachai was referring that now also has signed uh, MOU between uh, African uh, continental free trade area that any business which is trading between the within the, the, the uh, African region has to be has to bear the standards and has to bear the African standards, which is now uh, I'm, I'm also a member in in making sure that uh, the standards in Africa level are, are developed in a, in a place where uh, everyone will be, will be able and utilize the same to facilitate the, the trade. 
so this is the this is the this is what i can say uh i did my bachelor in in mechanical engineering but i also did my uh, masters in production engineering and also i went to i was equipped with a diploma in quality of a world market in university of zaland germany so those are the tools i'm using now uh, performing my duty thank you so now we go to the second uh, panelist uh, please uh, you can move to yes now we are going to hear from dr ashura katunzi the topic is how does the standardization and certification enhance competences competitiveness of SME in their role as engines of economic development and what are the challenges they face in implementing standards. In this case, uh, the focus is in Tanzania. So we'll be having uh, Dr. Katunz to present. Dr. Katunz currently is the acting uh, food risk assessment manager at TBS. She has uh, 14 years of experience working at TBS in standardization, quality assurance, inspection, and testing. Over the years uh, at TBS, uh, half of her, her, her time, uh, she has served in leadership. Her experience at TBS includes overseeing production product certification activity through conformity assessment uh, activities. Dr. Ashura, uh, her expert, any conformity uh, assessment include product, include products, processes, and service uh, certification in accordance to uh, ISO 17065. Also, fundamental of product certification and guidance for product certification, that is ISO 17067. Uh, inspection activities. Uh, that is ISO 17020, food safety, uh, that is ISO 22000, and uh, also uh, HACCP, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, good manufacturing process, I mean, good handling, manufacturing, and agricultural processes, a quality management system, that is ISO, 7, uh, ISO 9001 risk management that is 31,000, business continuity management system that is ISO 2231. Uh, she has worked, she has, she has worked experience in both private and public sector. Before joining TBS, she worked, to, she worked as an uh, auditor with PricewaterCooper, that is an international uh, company as a monitoring and evaluation consultant with a, a foundation for civil society in Tanzania. Dr. Shura holds a PhD in food science and technology from the University of Dar es Salaam, that is Tanzania, also a hold of masters in food science and in, in inequality assurance from the University of Reading, that is UK. And also, Shura holds a Bachelor of Science in Food Science and Technology from the Sokoina University of Agriculture. That is located in Morogoro, Tanzania. So this is Dr. Shura, and we are going to hear from her uh, the presentation. Uh, I hope she will present in a, brief, in a brief way, so as we utilize our little time we have. Please, Dr. Shura, you are welcome. Uh, thank you very much, moderator. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody from wherever you are. I've, I've just been introduced. Uh, I'm Ashura from TBS. Uh, the secretary, are you going to share the presentation or should I? We are, sorry, we are encouraging you to share if you can. Dr. Okay. Shura, can you share from your side? Or oh, we should help. Okay. 
Okay, if you can see it. Uh, we are about to see it, but uh, please continue. Yeah, I just have been given the topic how standardization certification activities enhance the competitiveness of SMEs and as their role of, as engineer of economic development, just a case study of Tanzania. Just a brief, uh, the, my presentation will have the standardization certification activities at TBS and how to enhance, uh, how TBS enhances competitiveness of SMEs as their role as engine of economic development, the main challenges faced by SMEs in Tanzania during implementation of standards. So we all know we've been talking about the standards. We all know what are the standards. Stand standards are very important as they facilitate trades, guard the environment, and they play a very crucial role in health and environment. As Mr. Rub Mr. Ruben Kisori during his presentation has been mentioning about the importance of, stand of standards. And we know there are a number of standards body like ARSO for overseeing the standards formulation process in Africa. We have ISO, ANSI, IEC, and many more. We know in our world without standards, it would have been chaotic. Just have a look at that picture. You can see at the junction, the traffic. If we didn't have the standards, it would have been chaos to cross over from one side to the other. So standards, they give us the, it's a drive for our everyday life. They give us the compatibility, interchangeability, and the comfort to live in a, in a better world. So we are seeing at TBS, uh, the certification activities. Certification activities at TBS, we are using the alignment with the ISO 17065 under the type five of product certification schemes. Why are we using type five of, uh, product certification scheme at TBS? Because the type five uh, is the scheme which is more comprehensive and involved. And it involves a number of processes. We have the selection, determination of characteristics, review, decision on certification, attestation, licensing, and surveillance. In a nutshell, we are saying that product certification process we are following or we are using at TBS, it involves mainly inspection at the factory and at open market to ensure that the product, they comply with the standards requirement. So what are we doing as TBS to enhance the competitiveness of SMEs in economic development through the standardization and certification activities? As previously the co-host, my DG, Dr. Thmani Ngeni has mentioned, we do a number of things. Most of all, we provide training to SMEs. Why are we providing training? We are providing trainings to give them awareness, to know the issues and what are the requirements of standards and quality assurance issues. So it is very important for us and we have been doing this to provide the awareness on standards, quality assurance, metrology, and testing, because all this, they, it is the pack and conformity assessment activities for, for SME to produce quality and safe products to be competitive. They have to be well informed and to understand the issues of SQMT. But also we build a technical capacity to SMEs through collaboration with other government institutions. We have a number of government institutions which we collaborate uh, working together to ensure that the SM SMEs they are equipped with the appropriate technical know-how. So also TBS we provide uh, uh, as during the, the remarks from our co-host, the DG of TBS has mentioned that we don't charge the SMEs, but their terms and condition. What we mean we don't charge is that the, we have an MOU of understanding with the CEDO. CEDO is the small industry development of organization, which has the role of checking the eligibility, like doing the due diligence, making sure that the SMEs, they, they, whoever is willing to go for certification, product certification process, it has met those criteria. He understand, he or she understand the manufacturer on what are the requirements so that they can meet those specific requirements of product certification. So the CEDO provides the incubation center like for production facilities, but also the technical know-how in collaboration with TBS. And when the SMEs, they, uh, they apply for certification, certification services at TBS, they have to be introduced by, by CEDO so that we make sure that whoever is coming under the umbrella of SMEs he has been already equipped with the appropriate knowledge and technology so that he can comply with the requirement of product certification. But also in collaboration with CEDO and other organization, we organize exhibition for SMEs to advertise their product. As we can all remember during Mr. Ruben, when we were doing his presentation, he's made a number of remarks including a number of barriers which are, which are 
which is the challenge for SMEs, which including market barrier, industrial barrier. So we are trying to overcome those to SMEs by, by giving them the platform to market their products. Uh, but also, most of all, uh, among which we provide the public awareness of regulatory requirement of standardization and certification activities to the general public, so that we, we, we know that when the public understands the importance of uh, certification and standards uh, implementation, then they will demand for certified products. In a way, they will make the SMEs being more competitive and to comp com comply with the requirement of certification so that their products can be certified. So the main things as TBS, which we are doing to enhance competitiveness of uh, SMEs through standardization and certification activities. But uh, what are the main challenges? We know we have been doing a number of interventions to make sure that their products are competitive, but also these SMEs, they, they face a number of challenges. Uh, one of them is including to have reliable production pr premises because uh, we are saying even if the SMEs they've been capacitated in, like the waiver of the charges and all that, but still they have to meet regulatory requirements. So um, one of the main challenges they face the SMEs is the having the reliable production pr premises. We know it has been uh, reported that in Africa, almost 90% of the enterprises is um, micro and small enterprises which are sole proprietor. So most of them you'll find they don't have reliable production premises, but also the capital. Uh, these SMEs, some of them, they lack the having the enough capital to meet the, to, to, to equip their, their production facilities, the appropriate, uh, with the appropriate uh, machinery and equipment, but also they lack the technical capacity take, uh, in terms of technical know-how on what they are producing. But also another challenge is which the SMEs they are facing is the machinery and equipment, but inadequate uh, knowledge of the standard to meet the standards requirement, but also the reliable market. So in a nutshell, those are the main challenges which they are faced by SMEs for the case of Tanzania. Uh, we are seeing SMEs, yeah, apart from being a, a big number in the economic development, as we are saying in, in Africa, they contribute 90%. We can say in Tanzania, uh, apart from that, they, we know SMEs, they contribute or they are mostly measuring in, pro in products and service delivery. But when you look at the products for the case of TBS, you'll find the SMEs, most of them, they produce food products and cosmetics, which you can find almost out of that 70% almost is the food products and 30% is the cosmetics. But out of this, SMEs, you find the almost 60% there in the informal business, and it's only 40% which are informal business. So these SMEs account, uh, they account for majority of low skilled and unskilled labor. But also these SMEs, it has been said by a number of previous speakers that they facilitate and feeding the community from the family to the district or to the national level. So they play a big role in our in our countries. But also the, these SMEs, they play a vital role in health and safety of the community. We all know that standards, they provide assurance in terms of the environment, health and safety. So we have to make sure that these SMEs, they produce quality and safe products so that they meet uh, our to the health and safety. So we are saying SMEs, they play a very vital role in the country's economic development. Uh, Tanzanian government has been made a number of deliberate efforts to empower SMEs through several means, including standardization, certification activities by TBS to ensure they produce safe and quality products. So safe food, safe products like, for example, foods, uh, they are very important to ensure that the public safeguarded with the better health for sustainable economic development. So we are saying it's everybody's responsibility in terms of the government, regulators, the private sector, the manufacturer themselves, those SMEs to ensure that whatever uh, they are producing, it meets the standards requirement to have a, a better health so that we can have competitive economic development. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ashura, for the uh, presentation. And at least you you are in the in the in the in the, in the time where we uh, we were given to you. Uh, Dr. Ashura was stressing that uh, though they are small, but they have to comply with the standards. So this is uh, this is uh, a repeated. A statement which we are just given by Gashaya as well, that 
though they are, we are talking about the small and medium enterprises, but they have to comply with the standard. Now, how to comply? Now the intervention has to come in where the government uh, need to help them to comply with the standard. So now uh, uh, I would like to welcome the, 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 the next uh, presenter, the panelist, that is uh, Maboka. Uh, yes, Maboka is here to present that, that and uh, the theme that easing the regulatory frame, uh, the regulatory burden on the SMA through think small first principle for a proper anchored and SME centered regulatory regime, good regulatory practices and guidelines for SME friendly technical regulations. Uh, Mr. Mobuka, Nikonia, Mr. Nikonia Mabuka Mambene, currently the Central uh, Zone Manager TBS. He has 22 years of experience uh, working with the Bureau. And uh, also, he worked with high achievement as East Africa Standard Committee Secretary for three years. And he has coordinated the harmonization of standards in East Africa region, where several standards have been harmonized and adopted by uh, EAC partner states in facilitating trade. Uh, he has participated in development of East Africa infrastructure, which are currently implemented in the region. Mr. Mwabuka is currently a central zone, as I said. Uh, he has participated uh, in several international and regional meetings on standardization and conformity assessment, including uh, East Africa, Sunday, providing high experience in international trade and has conducted many trainings in supporting industry and SME in achieving quality and safety in their processes, in their processing of several product for cross-border market, market access. Uh, Mr. Mwabuka uh, holds a uh, Master's of uh, Chemistry from University of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Mr. Mwabuka also holds a uh, Bachelor of Science in Education from University of Dar es Salaam. Uh, Mr. Mwabuka also holds a Certificate of World Trade and Conformity Assessment, Quality Infrastructure Development, well, which he, uh, he acquired it from Stockholm, uh, Sweden, and certificate in standardization and quality system in India. So this is Mwabuka, and I would uh, wish that Mwabuka, now you come and present uh, your theme uh, within the time allocated for you. Please, you are welcome. Thank, thank you, moderator. Uh, my, my, my preparation was 15 minutes. Can you give me a sharing, please? I cannot share. Uh, okay. okay, I also will help to share. Yes, this is now come. I think you can see and then you, then you hear to me from me. Do you hear me from, from my side, please? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, the single bus participants. As I said before, my submission was 15, prepared by 15 minutes, but I'll try my best to do within, uh, within 10 minutes as directed by my by moderator. For that matter, my submissions will be on the, on the five items, the introductions, the interest of the games, the greater framework on SMEs, the characteristics of the good and the friendly regulatory regimes of SMEs and the key element of the NSME center, the regulatory regimes, and then I will, I will conclude. Members, it is, it is crucial to recognize that the, the fundamental laws of the SMEs place in driving sustainable economy to be growth and job creations. However, these SMEs they are faced with a number of challenges which most of them is the regulatory frameworks. That is, they hinder the innovation and sustainable economic growth. 
There are other circumstances which include the financial capability, capability the, poor, the poor market accessibility, entrepreneurship skills and the knowledges, and mostly the supporting institution and bureaucratic, which also hinder the economic development. So, Chair, the economic growth of the SMEs globally, it depends upon on friendly regulatory requirements, frameworks, that provides the conducive business environment to support their innovations and the processing with the, 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 the supportings. By understanding and addressing these challenges, we can foster an environment that empowers SMEs to strive and contribute significantly to their economies. This chair, this is about letters can be the, the, the regular regulations, can be standards, procedures, rules, laws, and the others, which can hinder the SMEs. So the regulatory frameworks are formidable challenges for the SMEs. They share magnitude, the magnitudes of the compliance requirements and the bureaucratic procedures which hinder the SMC to progress. They affect SMC innovations. We know that the SMEs are very much innovative, see, the dynamics to the, to the products, and therefore they hinder the competitiveness, the market success, and the economic growth. With limited resources, SMEs find it difficult to allocate the time and the money to comply with the, with the difficult regulations. Consequently, there are often left struggling to keep up, impeding their ability to bring new products in the market and therefore economic growth. Studies which have been conducted indicate that there's the significant number of SMEs are faced with the difficulties for entry to the market due to regulatory requirements limiting their growth and therefore to, to, to not to contribute to the economics to grow. And therefore these issues should be addressed to unleash their full potentials in the market. Now, what should be done? To start with, by embracing the think small first principles, or we say the small business lens, which is a logical and a practical approach that acknowledges that the unique challenges are faced by SMC and provides the tailored solutions. It is a policy approach to consider small business, their needs, their point of views, and the impacts when addressing the policies, legislations, and regulations. The principle relies on the, the fact that the one size does not fit to all SMEs. Therefore, the policymaker making needs to account for the, the, the proportionate effects of regulations which have impact on the business for all, all sizes, and thus deliver the streamlining requirements that are easy to comply with the, these SMEs. By applying this think small first principle, the government of Tanzania through the TBAC as said by Dr. Shula, it provides the free support product certification programs to SMEs that the Bureau put aside amount of, of, of money yearly as a support for product certifications, focusing on their growth model of SMEs and how they are graduating to the point of starting to cut to cut to cover certification costs for the three years free of charge. After which the assessment is conducted by the, the TBS before they can start to contribute to the to the, to the Bureau from 20% in the fourth year to the seventh year where, you, where the SMC can, contribute the, can, can, can charge, be charged at 100%. This support, support is supported by the political will of the governments on supporting the SMC to grow and sustain. By blessing these principles, SMCs are empowered to focus on what they, 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 they do best, driving the innovations, creating jobs and stimulating economic growth. The same model is applied under also what we call the EMA class categories. Then what are the keys for the SMC to enter? One could be simplifications, the regulators. Advocating for the regulatory process that are simpler, user-friendly, and less time consuming for SMEs. In our case, we have so-called the one-stop center in Tanzania where the institutions can come together and the, the, the facilities SMEs. 
This reduces the administrative cost burden to the to the to the the, 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 the paperwork, free vulnerable resources for the MC, uh, for allocating into productive activities and enabling to innovative and expand their business and getting a market. Number two is the proportionalities, whereby a good and friendly regulatory regimes must be proportionate to the size and the nature of the SMEs. The question that recognizes the difference between a large and the small are needed to avoid the proportionality so that the compliance requirements are not stiff and therefore they can grow. This is about speaking the right balance and leveling the playing field of the SMEs in the market. Number three is what we call the accessibility to is which is a key. Strive to provide MC with the accessible accessible information on regulations, on the procedure, on the laws, community food guide, guide, guidance, and the supportive resources to help them to understand and the compliance to the regulatory requirements. This could be user-friendly websites, helplines, help, help and assistance programs that are specifically designed for SMC by fostering tailored support. We empower, empowered to navigate the regulatory requirements with the confidence of the SMEs. Number four could be the flexibility. Our regulatory requirements regulators need to be flexible, which is flexible to accommodate the dynamics and evolving the nature of the SMEs and the market in which they operate. As I said before, the SMEs are very innovative, dynamics, and therefore the regulators to be flexible so that they accommodate them. This flexibility, it allows the SMEs to adapt quickly to changing business environment, to explore new opportunities, and they remain sustainable, competitive. By fostering an environment that encourages flexibility, we create environments that becomes conducive to SMC and they can grow for economic development. Five and last is what you call the SMEs engagement. We cannot overlook the importance of engaging, engaging the SMEs directly in the regulatory requirement decision makings. So we say their voice needs to be heard and their perceptions also need to be considered so that they become part of the process, part of the process. By engaging, actively engaging SMEs in shaping the regulatory requirements that affect them, we can develop a more effective and impactful policies that addresses the SMC, SMEs needs and aspirations, and therefore become market access and can, can access the market freely. My conclusion is that the SMC, SMEs are the engine of the sustainable economic development. However, they are first by, affected by the regulatory requirements and the bureaucratic administrative support from enabling institutions. And therefore, SMC need to, to be to, to supported by implementing the friendly regulatory requirements regime with the closer collaboration of regulators and SMEs to promote a conduct the conducive with business development so that they can freely trade and access the market all over the, the world. Thank you very much for your listening, moderator. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nikonia Mwambene, for your good presentation. Yeah, you have highlighted that uh, one size does not fit all. Yes, that's correct. And you have just stressed that SME are very innovative and giving, you are arguing that the regulators uh, be flexible to accommodate the innov innovations of the SMEs so as not to hinder uh, development. Uh, in the same way, uh, you stress that the SME, they are the engines of development. So with those, uh, at least uh, three, uh, points I've captured from you, uh, which uh, complement each other. Uh, thank you very much. I hope uh, uh, people are, are forwarding the, their questions or rather clarification in the chat room, but there will be uh, a question at the end. So the, the panelists, please just be around. Uh, the questions are 
coming for you to, to reply quickly. So let's now go to the next presenter. Please, also, can you share the, the, the next uh, panelist? Yes, thank you very much. Yes, I would like to introduce to you uh, 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 Mr. Dan Githome, uh, who is presenting now the enhancing the contribution of SME in global and digitalized, that is online platform economy and need for digital transformation. The online platform features digital tools, practices, benefits and challenges for SME. Uh, Dan Kithomi is the also ICT officer and the DISNET coordinator responsible for ARUSO information system dissemination under the guidance of ARUSO General, uh, Secretary, Secretary General. Uh, Dan Kithomi has been uh, coordinating the continental essay competition for nine years under the guidance of ARUSO Secretary General. He has 10 years, he has more than 10 years experience with ARSO at the ARSO Central Secretariat serving as ICT officer, uh, as well as as a competition and DESNET coordinator. Uh, he is a multi-skilled information and uh, information and communication technology officer with a good all around uh, supervisory and technical expertise very capable with a proven ability to ensure the smooth running of ICT systems uh, to provide IT services that will improve the efficiency and performance of a company. Extensive practical knowledge of complex system build, uh, hardware and software testing, uh, network support, technical support, and computer repair with a certificate in Microsoft Certified Server Expert, uh, Prince, two, Prince Two Project Management, and is a Certified Information System Auditor. Uh, Danny holds a Bachelor Degree in Business Information and Technology from the University of, uh, from Jomo Kenyatta University in Kenya. So with this, then uh, I would like to welcome uh, Dan to present. I hope Dan, you will share from your side. I uh, thank you. I'll be sharing from my side. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Yona. Uh, my name is uh, Dan Kithome uh, from the Arsenal Central Secretariat. I'll be giving a brief uh, presentation on uh, the that online platform, be features, very... digital tools, practices, benefits, and challenges. Uh, this is with relation to standards. Uh, I'll somehow uh, touch on some of the things that you usually use on a daily basis. Um, yeah, just, be brief, brief, just be, be brief as we are out of time. Okay. Thank you. Um, on my presentation, we have, uh, I, I want to do some SME relation with regards to digitization. Uh, when you talk about digitization, Africa economies in several ways, for example, has already revolutionized this. When you talk about retail payment systems, which is therefore allowing uh, customers and businesses to be able to transact using, for example, what we call uh, Visa cards or MasterCards. Uh, remember, when you talk about standardization, we always don't think as those activities being done are standardized. Remember how the cards communicate, how the gadgets communicate, uh, considering the different banks um, um, being available, organizations running those activities. Um, for example, you've been able to go to the supermarket and you've been able to fit the card from a different bank into that platform. That means standardization has been done. Um, we need to note that uh, an SME, and now we are talking about an MSME micro, where you have one employee to a maximum of either 10 to 20. Um, 
in this presentation, we're talking about SMEs where we're moving to about an organization between 20 and 200 employees, how this digitization usually actually affects how it is being implemented, uh, what benefits uh, come from digitization, are standards important when implementing the digitization agenda. Now, if I look at this, I know that under the UN SDGs, we have this 17 uh, 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 activities of which affect no poverty, zero hunger, good health, and all the rest. And this is something that as you implement, we've noted that SMEs lag in the digital transition, uh, despite them knowing that we have tremendous potential when it comes to digital enhanced tools being implemented. I'll move a little bit faster to just speak about the benefits of SMEs going digital. Uh, one, when you talk about building resilience and external shocks, when you have a digital platform, for example, if you're talking about an ERP, an enterprise uh, resource planning platform, um, a workflow management system, a, pay, a payroll system, you can be able to calculate if uh, the money you're being, being paid out you know, when you're using these digital platforms is effective for you. Uh, you can be able to know if you're supposed to either reduce uh, through external shocks, if you're supposed to reduce either the workforce, uh, if you're supposed to deal with different kinds of sub suppliers. And so it's easy for you to be able to analyze and provide those skills of workability. When you talk about increased savings, you know, you're moving from what we call the routine processes to digitizing the processes. So there's that saving in costs. Uh, for example, we had uh, the COVID-19 influenced uh, restrictions, making us know that most of the time when you're saving on costs, when you're offering, for example, transport costs for staff, this can be reduced if uh, some of the workers can work from home. And therefore, there's a saving when it comes to SME operations and the normal routines. Uh, when you talk about traceability, which is a very key role when it comes to standardization and trade, you're talking about, for example, supply chain of foods, where we want to know uh, where from farm to fork activities. And so it is easy, for example, where uh, organization provide QR codes, which can be scanned. And these QR codes provide key information on specific products. Um, I think to just to relate effectively, uh, the supply chain is very important when it comes to this. And we know, for example, when you want to export and you're talking about SMEs, it's not only about uh, local uh, trade, it's also international or even inter-African trade. So when you want to export, this needs to be digitally mapped. You need to have information about farmers. You need to have certification details. And so with digitization, you'll either, either provide this information either on your website or even provide a link is easily accessible by uh, the stakeholders who is either this under the supply chain levels. Uh, when you talk about logistics, we're talking about reducing what we call manual costs and also the staff requirement. Some things can be done online. For example, some applications, um, you don't literally need to move from, uh, I'm taking this example from Kenya to Uganda to uh, deliver a certain document, you can easily, for example, take it to, nowadays we have online digital logistic providers. Uh, for example, in this case, I'm giving an example of Kobo 360, who give you efficiency when it comes to logistics. You log in your product, say the product will be picked from point A, and then it's picked, you're able to trace if your product has arrived, you know, and it has been signed for by the specific person you'd uh, communicated with in the destination country. And so it reduces the cost of logistics, yes, it's been done by another organization who is going to charge you, but the charge is much less because you've consolidated all your uh, uh, products to be shipped by one person. Uh, when we talk about increased competitiveness and agility, the benefits of going digital, um, when we talk about competitiveness, it means that you've gone much further and you're competing with larger enterprises, being an SME, you need to also use the digital platforms to make sure that you have all those informations that are required, you're able to know if this product is moving much faster and much better. Uh, when you talk about digital platforms, you're able to easily relate to, for example, the African um, uh, continental free trade area uh, platforms with regards to trade, what is the most traded uh, activity. So if you are farming, for example, if it's agricultural and you're farming a specific product and you realize that if I farm, uh, for example, wheat, it will move much faster in the market than what you're planting as maize and it will have better returns. You're easy, it's easy for you to change when it comes to agility. You're able to know which product moves much faster, the best grades to be able to be provided. 
And finally, when you talk about digitalization, you're talking about data-driven insights to improve stakeholder en engagement and experience. So you're not doing things out of uh, misinformation. You actually know the intelligent ways of accumulating this data so that at least you know the pain points uh, experienced by the stakeholders and what you're supposed to actually work on on improvement. Uh, finally, another benefit you get is if you move to these digital platforms, it's easy for you to be able to get uh, increased liquidity. We've seen organizations offering uh, financing through the online platforms. If they're able to check at how your business is uh, working, they're able to go through your enterprise resource planning, see if you're making profits. And so it's not all about speak, it's about the system showing that you're actually going, doing, going some extra math. Um, we're talking about, if we go to the next slide, we talk about digitalization. Uh, policy priorities and African governments, what are they doing differently? Um, under this specific slide, I've noted that these are the challenges and also solutions being provided by uh, the governments that we have. Uh, data availability. We know that sometimes data in Africa in some countries is rel relatively expensive, uh, um, considering uh, how other governments or other, you have a value added tax charged on it. You also have implementation tax, you know, and all those taxes hindering access to, uh, for example, data. We have governments. Ike, Ike, with... Ike, go check. Ike, please mute your, mute your video. Ike, 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 please mute your video. Okay, this has been removed. Thank you. Uh, so when we talk about data availability, we have where can governments where we, they control your access to um, internet or even for example, data. And so it hinders the privacy and access to data for their citizens. This is something that SMEs, when sometimes you're trading online, you need to post a product for sale on your e-commerce website and you're not able to access those platforms, it hinders as, uh, so it's something that as government policies, we encourage governments to uh, recede on these uh, government controls and ensure that people have the freeness to post uh, for businesses, enhanced computer power. And when you talk about computer power, uh, this is about connectivity, increased electricity connectivity. You have challenges, maybe you only have internet when you come to the city. And so when you go back to the village, you have a challenge and so it hinders uh, trade, maybe for example, you have an e-commerce website and on e-commerce or online platforms, you need to communicate effectively to uh, the customer and you're not able to access internet. And so you lose the customer because of this. When you talked about improved network connectivity, we've seen collaborations among gov African governments with Google to provide internet and Starlink by um, uh, Elon Musk. And this to set up, for example, free internet booths to enhance connectivity in African countries and also improve uh, the network connectivity levels. Uh, also to reduce transaction costs, uh, governments are moving, for example, uh, their services from the normal physical meet, one-on-one -on -one meetings to e-government. And this reduces the time spent making an application, visiting government offices, and furthermore, human interactions where you have corruption, you know, the corruption menace, mainly affecting SMEs. Um, just to note, this mix, governments implementing uh, this mix of policies where you have technological support, um, skills development for uh, the staff, and even several organizations, we've seen this being done by government agencies, they improve your skill when it comes to uh, access to ICT. Uh, you're talking about uh, alternate sources of finance and fintech, this is where you're talking about online platforms to access uh, credit, uh, improving the SME capacity to manage, for example, and protect their data because uh, information is power. Um, adopting sound digital security practices. These are things that governments are implementing from time to time to make sure that everything works effectively. Promoting effectively e-governments as a lever for business adoption, making sure, for example, you can easily apply uh, open a company online in one day. It's not the typical where you have to apply, wait, go back to the offices. And this helps us reduce on cost and effectively use uh, uh, online platforms or digital platforms to make sure that uh, all the activities that are required are run within uh, the predicts. Uh, just to see how, for example, 
SMEs are utilizing, for example, um, this digitization to offer healthcare services and social assistance. Uh, we are talking about an online physician offering consultancy services and collaborating with, for example, pharmacists so that they can be able with web logging and specific applications. Now you can see, for example, on my first circle where you have my DAWA, the application is what benefits do we get, for example, if you have uh, online consultation? Yes, there are challenges which come with it, but the main benefit is you've saved time, uh, cost of travel, um, you've eased access into the platform you, through internet, which is readily available in some places, quick medical attention, which does not literally require uh, direct or doctor's um, appointment or physical meetings. And then you'll only leave the doctors to attend to critical patients at the emergency or casualty facilities, therefore reducing queues and cross-contamination with patients. You see now, this is one of the benefits that you get, for example, by using these platforms. And what are the challenges, for example, when you're using this? Everything comes with its own challenge. You're talking about issues of language communication. Somebody may say that they're having a headache, yet it's being caused by a stomach problem. So that's where some challenges come in. Again, we go back to the accessibility of internet, which is being solved by policies being created by government and also costs related to awareness creation that these tools are readily available for you to use either for free because we've seen cases where online physicians for the first few months as they're introducing the service and the cases are usually relatively free. Uh, something else we need to note is the level of, you know, you can be able to check the rating of, for example, this specific doctor. And you can see like on the case where you have the cl clinical medicine a doctor with eight years experience, people can be able to give the ratings. If, for example, they were healed <laughs> following this online consultation from this physician, then they can give you a rating. So you can be able to select the doctor by yourself, not the clinical way when you go to a hospital and the doctor is automatically selected for you and you don't know if the doctor is going to heal you. Um, again, just to go further into analyzing how SMEs can literally use uh, digitization to offer, for example, accommodation services, something which all of us have used, um, food service delivery, this is delivery, taxi and extra trade. I'll try and touch up this quickly, uh, uh, Yona, so that at least we can finalize. And the decision is yes, critical yes, when yes. you're using all this. Uh, for example, when you're talking about the traditional taxi, we're talking about key examples where we've disrupted the contemporary way of doing business. You want to order a taxi, you're at po uh, position Z. The, the taxi services is almost half because the taxi is not coming to pick you and then take you back. And so it's a way of actually reducing and job creation within Africa. When you talk about standardization, the taxi still works the same way the normal taxi works. Just at this specific rate, some taxi uh, applications usually bill you according to how, for example, the number of kilometers traveled. So this is a standardized way, but sometimes not using the physical standard harmonized, but using the literal way of taxis. When you talk about food delivery, you're talking about we need to ensure that we have good hygiene levels when it comes to... Um, the food being delivered to you. Um, you talk about training of this specific staff. We've seen uh, this delivery business established who are, who are delivering, resorting to secure seals. This is things that standards usually cater for. These stickers that you put is a standard for that. How you package that document, how you, or the, the containers used to package those uh, foods for delivery, they're supposed to be a, of a specific level. And furthermore, adding the user feedback, which is very critical so that you can know if you either improve the service or change. Uh, when you're talking about accommodation, there's a big disruption in the hotel and tourism industry where you can be able to book using Airbnb services and booking.com. The internet age has come of, you know, it has been able to help us develop new tools to help us move much faster and much easier when it comes to hotels. As much as it has caused a disruption in the hotel industry, Hotels have also been pushed, you know, to cater for those activities. And how have they been pushed to cater for these activities? Hotels have provided websites which can give you a 3D view, you know, of how your room will look like, how your conference room will look like, how the pool will be. And these are things that digitization has created. So you know how a website should be done. 
And so there's a standard of how a website should look. It has to have a homepage. You have to have how to contact them. You have to, to in, uh, inform them about their about pages. And this is part of standardization. Now, as I tend to uh, go to the conclusion of my presentation, we're talking about digitization of adoption, so, uh, the SME gaps and how it has been done. If you look at uh, my illustration on the screen, we have, for example, e-bookings. Uh, SMEs, small and medium, and you can see the two lines have been able to circle that. Big data, where you're supposed to actually check the information that you're supposed to be using. Supplier, customer management, it's really low and it comes to small and medium enterprises. It's something that we can adopt and move towards. Maybe just to uh, add on to this, we've noted that adoption of these key technologies in each, uh, in each sector is very critical. And there's something I touched on before on my previous slide, when you talk about accommodation and food service sector, high-speed uh, broadband connection is very important at that level. Uh, having a website is also very important. You need to also have cloud storage of uh, files because of either hacking or other activities. When you talk about, for example, the wholesale sector where this is also SMEs, it's key to use technologies when it comes to electronic sales and cloud computing where you host, for example, database and also training of your experts who may be ICT specialists, you know. And while we move to the retail trade, which goes much, much further down is where you're talking about e-sales, online sales and cloud computing to manage customer relationship and the key technologies that we can be able uh, to implement. We encourage, for example, in this specific case, policy makers, you know, to ensure that these core digital tools, you know, we are given more uh, tax reliefs when it comes to this implementation so that we can easily promote these tools to be included in their businesses because most SMEs avoid uh, uh, installation of this uh, digitization tools because as you install it's expensive there's also another cost when it comes to management yes it is much better when it goes to the economy but those few ex activities for example elect electronic invoicing you actually push for that e-commerce platforms are much better than a physical meeting it saves on fuel if you need to use either public transport or even drive to that specific place so there's those specific activities uh, effective we've noted that small and medium uh, enterprises use social media a lot and this is something that digitization has been able to uh, uh, be encouraged for the SMEs to adopt. Now, at the Arsenal Central Secretariat, there are some things that we are actually doing. Um, this was touched uh, during uh, Mr. Gashai's presentation and the technical director's uh, presentation. We've noted that uh, we have uh, the issue of ICT accessibility standards. When you talk about this, this is about the bridge of the digital divide and exclusion of uh, persons with disabilities. Uh, this was championed by Kenya. It is geared to promote the digital inclusion of uh, people uh, with disabilities and older persons in making the private and public sector digital pro products usable to all. And so there's a TC that is working on this to make sure that these standards are there and this is implementable. At uh, the continental level at ARSO, uh, with the coordination at the national level every year, for the last 10 years, we've been having the control uh, uh, essay exercise. And we are lucky that in this year's exercise, it emphasized on the role of standardization in promoting the growth of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises for sustainable, inclusive, and diversified industrial and economic development in Africa. And so there's something we are doing, um, and this is just to inculcate the culture of quality to uh, students in tertiary institutions. As the next owners at this specific level, of SMEs and multinational organization. Uh, we're talking about training and awareness creation exercises to SMEs on standards developed at the continental level. And therefore we push for utilization of these standards in order to, uh, uh, to get the realization of the FCFTA. We've had several exercises in Burundi, Chad, uh, Ethiopia and Uganda and more countries are being engaged so that we have these trainings and awareness creation of the standards at the African level. We have the ECOMAC certification, where we're talking about the maturity model. We're talking about starting from the MSME, you know, and have the maturity model growing from bronze uh, uh, to diamond or platinum. And these specific standards, we have sustainability standards under agriculture, fisheries, uh, forestry, and tourism, which are also being broadened to other activities. We've noted that in Africa, agriculture is one of the major uh, economic activity. Um, we also encourage uh, SMEs to participate in the standardization process and also harmonization of standards. And like this, they will also be able to give their input 
on where uh, they effectively work. Uh, uh, Mr. Ruben has talked effectively about the Made in African guidelines. This is just to encourage SMEs to adopt uh, quality. And then we also have where we are sharing information from the African level uh, uh, to all African uh, members and also uh, citizens. We're talking about having two uh, e-learning platforms. So we have e-learning at paki.org, and then we also have ecomac ecomac.arsooran.org uh, where you have this platform. For that, we can be able to learn, get a certification once you provide effective uh, um, activities. We talk about Made in Africa just to add a little bit more. This product is aimed at facilitating African uh, Africa's development by fostering um, industrialization, produ productive capacity, promoting export diversification, uh, protecting intellectual property and inter-African trade for brands and products purely made in Africa uh, and also making sure that it's sustainable, profitable and creating global value chains. Uh, I would like to submit on this. Thank you. And we are moving from one standard, one test, one certificate, to be accepted everywhere. And this is key for the implementation of the FCFT agreement. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Dani Gizomi, for your uh, good presentation. Uh, really, we wanted to hear much from you as the, 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 the world is going into, 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 into ICT. So, you know, that, that, that those are the first uh, generation. So thank you very much, uh, presenters. This is the last uh, presenter to present to us. Uh, I'll be having a few questions from each presenter. Uh, so please, uh, please, I would like the presenter to be uh, ready for the question. Of course, I'll, I'll follow the, the floor. Uh, starting from the, uh, the, the presenter, the first presenter uh, from the, the semi, the Made in Africa, uh, quarry, quarry qualification criteria, uh, Mr. Uh, Ruben. I have uh, two questions for you. Please, are you are you are you here? Yes, yes, yes. I can. See. I can see Ruben. Uh, my first question is that: what are the what are the main challenge faced by the Made in Africa product with re, with respect to both domestic and global market access and value chain. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. And um, the main in Africa list is. Sorry, 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 Ruben. Sorry, Ruben. We cannot hear you properly. I don't know if it is in my, from my side or from all the participants. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, 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 I can hardly hear you, but I don't know if it is from my side. It's the same system. OK. Yep. Try. Yes, uh, I think Fred also experienced the same. Uh, so it is my system that has become bad. Who else cannot hear me? At least now, at least now I can hear you. So please, you can present, and then we'll see if uh, uh, you have you have cleared the the challenge. Okay. Um, basically, what I was saying is that uh, the Made in Africa is supposed to address some of the issues uh, with respect to the challenges faced by the same SMEs. And these challenges include, for example, the products not meeting standards, uh, the products not being registered uh, with respect to their trademarks and uh, brands. So you find that they are good products, yes, but these products do not have any branding, they do not have any registration, and they don't have any protection. So such, is, such are the challenges. Um, and in that case, then it means that what needs to be done is to have the products uh, properly branded, meeting standards, and registered in their country so that they are able to, uh, to meet the requirements of the customers. Uh, the third point, of course, um, is that 
they need to meet the rules of origin. When we say rules of origin is that they are able to be demonstrated that they are produced in those countries that they claim to be produced. Uh, otherwise, if it is a product that is uh, important, then it is repackaged. It doesn't meet the rules of origin of the country from which, which it is claimed to be exported from. So, so those are the challenges that, they are, that, that the countries face uh, or the, the SMEs face in terms of uh, complying with the Made in Africa. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Gisori, uh, for, for replying to that. I have a follow-up question in, in, in the same line that how would the Made in Africa uh, qualification criteria helps in addressing these challenges then? So the Made in Africa qualification criteria set out a very ambitious uh, kind of approaches. Three dimensions. First, it is to meet the requirements of standards. For them to meet the requirements of the standards, they have to meet the, the certification processes. And the certification processes also need to demonstrate that they are accredited. So that system of the quality infrastructure needs to be in place. And that quality infrastructure needs to be scaled in a manner that it will offer the services uh, to the SMEs. So that, that part needs to be addressed. And most of the countries, of course, including Tanzania, already have that system of looking at how you assist the SMEs who do not have a lot of resources to, uh, to access uh, the testing uh, certification processes and product uh, development issues. The second point is that uh, the countries normally have these intellectual property offices so we are insisting that uh, in the Made in Africa criteria, we're insisting that these um, officers need to reach out and make it possible for the SMEs to approach them and to be assisted uh, to register if the product is designed within the country or if the product is to be registered as a brand uh, to be able to be uh, you know, assisted uh, to register that so that they do not have this kind of very rigid uh, system of registering uh, the products or of uh, assisting the, the SMEs to reject, register their designs if they have designed something. So you, you find that most times see the, the um, intellectual property offices in developing countries operate on a very rigid kind of uh, manner that is also very off uh, from what they're supposed to do. And so you wonder where, where, why some countries have a lot of registrations, but you find in Africa they are not. Yet, when you go to the market, you do find that there are quite a number of products that have been registered. The third dimension, of course, it is the rules of origin. And this one is very easy uh, to do. Uh, most of the uh, customs officers, those that deal with customs, they have the capacity uh, to, to, to assess and to assist people understand uh, what it means for a product to be originating from Tanzania, to be originating from Zambia, to be originating from Rwanda. So this is something that uh, we need these customs uh, organizations to also reach out and tell people this is what you need to do. And the Made in Africa has made it clear that all these institutions need to play their part so that they promote the businesses uh, or the, of the SMEs uh, to really make the countries grow. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gisori, for giving us the how uh, in the, uh, for, from the following uh, question. So now I'll go to the second presenter, and uh, the question will come from the, the firm that how does the standardization and certification enhance the competitiveness of SME in their role as, as, an, as an engine of economic development and what are the challenges that they face in implementing standards? In this case, focus in Tanzania. Now, the question to Dr. Ashura is, what are the measures are Tanzania putting in place to ensure that the SME have access to standards and certification programs? Dr. Ashura. Thank you, moderator. As uh, I previously mentioned during my presentation, uh, a number of interventions which have been put in place by Tanzania, specifically TBS, in collaboration with other government institutions like uh, CEDO. I've mentioned we have a memorandum of understanding whereby the CEDO, they provide the technical capacity 
to these SMEs to ensure that like uh, eligibility check to ensure that they come, they are ready to go for commercial production and to go through the certification process. So that is the first measure I've mentioned about the trainings. We provide the training. There's a dedicated uh, which is research and training, which does the training, uh, providing training capacity to SMEs. And this section provides the trainings to all, to SMEs uh, nationwide, depending on the uh, national priority for the year. Like for example, in the year 21-22, all the SMEs in the re in the country they are trained on. Uh, standardization certification requirements for the products of sunflower oil, cashew nut, and milk and milk products. And for this current financial year, which is July 2022 to June 2023, a number of trainings have been provided to SMEs in, in, in the sector of rice, spices, and cassava. So we provide uh, trainings, and but also on-site coaching when there's a need to specific SMEs to ensure that they, they know the the technicalities of producing the quality and safe products depending on what they are producing. But also we collaborate with a number of public and private partners to ensure that they meet their, we, together, the SMEs, they meet the requirements of standardization and certification. So those are the major uh, initiatives which we are doing to ensure that the SMEs, they produce the competitive products. Thank you, Dr. Uh, again, that what are the major now? What are the major obstacles uh, uh, in promoting standardization and uh, certification among SMEs uh, that you are experiencing um, in, the, in in Tanzania? Thank you, Moderator Engineer Yona. I think this has been mentioned by a number of presenters, but I'll just say yes. uh, in summary, yeah most of which is including meeting the regulatory requirements. Even for yes. Tanzania, despite the initiatives, the intervention which has been made by the Bureau, still there's the challenges of these SMEs to meet regulatory requirements, especially to having the designated premises for the production of their products, but also to have skilled personnel. We know that these SMEs, it has been mentioned, most of the companies owned by these SMEs, they are sole proprietor which most of them, they lack the skilled the personnel and, and other obstacle, I will say is the capital in terms of the machinery. Although we have like a, a number of institutions where they produce the local based the machinery to, to cater for SMEs production in, in, in the country, but still they, they face the challenge having the financial muscles to buy those machinery to meet the, the production scale which they need, but also, the packaging, the packaging material is a big challenge to SMEs because you'll find them, they produce a small quantity, but when they go to the producer in need of producing it, maybe a number of packaging materials or packaging, the labeling, they will need to make an order of a big chunk of, of number. But for SMEs, that's a big challenge for them. So at times you'll find them, they reuse the packaging which they find it in the market of which they make their product inferior or not being that competitive as we would have liked as a regulatory body. So those are the main challenges which or obstacles they face by the SMEs despite a number of interventions made by TBS at national level. Back to you, Thank you moderator. Very, Thank you very much, Dr. Shura, for your response to the to the a clarity questions. So I would like to invite the third presenter, that is Mr. Mabuka, uh, on the theme that uh, easing the regulatory burden on the SMEs through Think Small First Principle for proper for proper anchored and SME-centered regulatory regime, good regulatory practices, and guidelines for SME-friendly technical regulations. Uh, uh, Mr. Mobuka. Yes, I hear you. Please. I would I would like to get a clear a clear understanding. How are the cumbersome uh, regulatory framework uh, a hindrance to SME growth? Uh, thank you, moderator, for the good question. See. But when you are saying the, the, the framework, see, it implies a number of the requirements, see, which are made by policies, see, by made by, 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 by laws, see, procedures, and the, and the like. The cumbersome we are mentioning here is one could be the multiple institutions to the SMEs. The SMEs have money in cash. 
The SME are innovatives. They do without info being informed. But once they are already undergoing their, their innovations, the multiple institutions come in. The multiple regulatory requirements come in. The multiple procedures, the multiple requirements which hinder their innovations to progress. And therefore, we say these people have money. They want it to do business. And therefore, at the beginnings, they are not even involved in the process. They get information later on after they have done that. So we're saying this, this is the regulatory requirements, which are too much in the institution, should be considered to be streamlined so that the SMEs can enjoy the market. Thank you, as if I can tell the answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you have uh, made it very clear, very, very clear. I think even the participants got it right. So just a follow-up question as well. Uh, what are then do you consider would be the good and friendly regulatory regime uh, for the for the SME? If I remember, I remember my presentation, I said one of them is to consider the needs engaging with the SMEs from the beginnings. And then you consider their perceptions from the beginnings, educate them. Finally, we say simplify regulatory requirements so that they can, they can, can engage freely in the market, but comply to the safety of the water they are producing. So the issue is engagement. Here their perceptions, here the information, but dissemination information timely so that they can, can understand even before they start their business, they know the consequences to the business to the market. And then support the market access. And then insufficiency, avoid the bureaucracy on supporting them. Where then they can, can enjoy the market. Thank you, moderator. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, engage the SME from the beginning. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, now uh, I'll go to the to the last presenter, of course, not last in the in terms of importance, but uh, 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 he was presenting the same the same that uh, enhancing the contribution of SME in global digital and digitalization, that is online platform economy and need for digital uh, transformation. The online platform features digital tools, practices, benefit and challenge for SME. Uh, Mr. Dan, uh, this is the question I want to, uh, to forward to you, just to get a clear uh, understanding that what are, the, what are the key now, the digital uh, opportunities for SME growth and market access uh, in Africa? I know you have mentioned some of them, but at least the key ones. Uh, Dan. Thank you very much, Yona. Um, I think when we relate to uh, my presentation and what we talked about, the key elements to be able to, for uh, SMEs to grow is one, uh, using effectively the online portals with information on trade and trade data. Uh, this information portals, we have the African Trade Web Portal, you have the African Trade Observatory, and all the other portals available uh, at the regional economic level. Um, just to make sure that you integrate all this, and ensure that, uh, for example, you have an uh, e-commerce system at the SME level to be able to move from one point to the other. And finally, one of the key things that I've noted when you're talking about key digital opportunities is ensuring that you're using social media effectively to engage your customers uh, and other, other stakeholders in your uh, reach. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dan, for the uh, brief uh... Uh, pointing out the the opportunities, but I, I have a small follow-up question, uh, just to to know exactly what, what will be the I mean, what is the challenge for SME facing? I mean, the SME facing uh, in adoption of the modern uh, technology uh, like the the e-commerce, e and what should the government then do or stakeholders to improve the the, the, the situation? Uh, thank you, Yona. Once again, I think. The main challenge uh, um, SMEs experience is one, the cost of implementation of these digital platforms or this uh, e-commerce system. Uh, remember, this has to be done by a professional. Uh, luckily, um, you can be able to have what we call uh, self-doing platforms. When you talk about uh, 
new technology, we're talking about AI, where you can feed onto a platform and say, you want to make an e-commerce website to sell, for example, batteries, to sell, for example, fruits. Now, those are challenges that uh, you'll go with. Remember, when you're talking about e-commerce, it does not avoid what we call the relative having a store. You need to have a warehouse on how you store your information, where you store your products, and all this needs to be standardized. So the main challenge facing, most people think that when you're using modern technology, you don't need to have the products available at your store. Yes, you can be trading on behalf of somebody else, but then again, you need to have the rapport. Something else that the government and stakeholders need to improve so that it can have the commitment of the government when it comes to supporting this digitalization um, and also the government providing training opportunities. In my presentation, I clearly touched on where Governments have training opportunities on ICT. Uh, some governments even source uh, support from international partners to be able to uh, take their citizens to uh, developed countries so they can be trained on these activities. Uh, I think to, to some extent, we need to improve uh, the number of people who can be able to make these e-commerce systems. And like at this level, we'll be able to lower the cost of implementation of these specific activities. Uh, when you talk about an MSME, uh, somebody's trying to get into the business, may not have enough money to improve or put all these uh, ICT systems in the organization. When you're talking about somebody to manage their social media, maybe somebody uh, did a, a degree, for example, in agriculture, and their main knowledge is not on ICT and they're not well versed on the same. And so these are the main challenges we usually have. We've had, um, People, for example, like myself, have done a degree in business and IT. And so I can easily relate where it touches on the business side and the IT side. But if you find somebody who's done only, for example, he's gone to school, he's done a degree on IT. And so I think it's something, even in our education systems, they need to always have that issue of business. So that as you churning out experts from the university, you're churning experts who are ready to open businesses and move forward, with the government agenda and make Africa a better place. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dan, for uh, presenting at least now, this is a summarized, at least the briefing of what you presented earlier. So uh, within my hand, I have only four, four minutes uh, for four presenters. So I would like to give one minute a wrap up uh, points to give to the to the to the participant. So uh, now this time I will just speak randomly to give one minute to wrap up. Give us give us uh, what what is your take out what what is your takeaway. Uh, I would I would like to start with Dr. Shura. Uh, thank you, moderator. I will assume being a lady, I've just begin given the opportunity yeah. of speaking first. Yeah, just I, I to saw you, were, you are just ready to, to be the first. <laughs> Thank you for the, for the opportunity. I'll just wrap up by saying it's everybody's responsibility to make a SMEs more competitive, being an international organization, a regulator, a government, a private sector. It is uh, everybody's responsibility to make SMEs products more competitive, as we have all seen that they play a vital role in economic development, but also they are feeding our community from the family level to national level. So we have a role to ensure they are more competitive in terms of regulatory requirements of certification and standards as a whole. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's our role to make uh, SME competitive. Uh, that is Ashura's uh, uh, takeaway point. Now, uh, let me invite uh, Dan. Dan, are you with us? Thank you very much, Yona. Sorry, I was unmuting. Um, on my key takeaway point is uh, we encourage governments and government agencies to provide commitment towards digitalization of activities relating to SMEs. Uh, by this, they provide a competitive environment for SMEs by ensuring that they are linked and they provide value addition to activities. And when you talk about standardization, SMEs are the key uh, to trade and providing uh, employment. Ensure that we employ those activities as is done in developing countries where you have integration when it comes to standardization. One organization, five or five SMEs can be producing the same part, all standardized, 
uh, equivalent and effective to be used, for example, in uh, development of, uh, for example, assembly of a vehicle. You have one specific part being produced and by use of standards, effectively, you're able to confirm and verify that this part is effective. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Dan. Then I welcome Nikonia. Thank you, moderator. My, my takeaway could be applying the principle of, of think small first principle, which I mentioned before, before the SME have a unique requirements and the challenges. And there was a supporting institutions to fit in, should fit in and support them with the positive attitude so that we can, they can access the market and economic growth. Thank you very much. I know you're muted, so perhaps it is uh, my turn. Oh, thank you, Gisori. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so I yeah. welcome Gisori now for, for presentation, for the one minute yeah. presentation. I will not take a minute, uh, uh, moderator. Uh, what I would say is that basically SMEs are what are the engines of uh, our economies. And for the engines of our economies to do well, we need to embrace them, give them the ability to use standards and equip them uh, to actually take advantage of the FCFTA uh, agreement, which opens a very big market and opportunities uh, to work across the borders with similar SMEs uh, in order for them to participate in the regional and global value chains. That way, then we can have Africa prospering and have um, a, an inclusive uh, economic and industrialization in the continent. I thank you. Unmute yourself, please. Before I, I hand over to Gashai, uh, I saw uh, Dr. Ngenya, the uh, Director General of TBS, was with us for the entire time. So uh, uh, probably I should give uh, one minute time to for 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 him to give uh, a remark on the on the on the presentation which is made here. So, uh, uh, Dr. Ngenya, please. Thank you very much, moderator, uh, and thank you all the participants for, uh, especially those who gave some, you know, presentation. The presentation were very good and very informative. And uh, through the presentation, I could read, I could read that we all acknowledge that the, the, the importance of the SMEs, especially for the growth of our economies, economies of our countries. And uh, in that they offer employment and, uh, you know, uh, the great number of population, you know, uh, of, of uh, these uh, 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 SMEs, they contribute a lot and uh, they have, I mean, our economies are dependent on them. So uh, with, we, we, as, as, as countries and as institutions of, uh, of, I mean, conformity standard institutions. We need to do something to contribute to us uh, these uh, SMEs so that our countries, you know, forge ahead, you know? Uh, in that, at the end of the day, we, so we could also learn a lot of, you know, uh, problems that are facing uh, our, 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 our SMEs. So my, my take is that we should, as, as a standard organization, we should do something, you know, we should contribute. Already TBS, we have, you know, some interventions, but, you know, they are within the interventions, we face some problems. So we should sit together and, and come up with, a, with, with, a, with standards that, that uh, will cater for, for, for these, uh, you know, uh, SMEs. So that at the end of the day, you know, uh, our countries forge ahead. We also acknowledge that you know uh, most of uh, mo most of us, you know, our populations, they don't go to supermarkets. They go to these corner shops. Where most of the items, you know, uh, uh, they purchase theirs from SMEs. So honestly, we need to do something that will 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 intervene, you know, 
uh, so that at the end of the day, we get good products, you know, for our own safety. And then also, we, 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 we contribute to the economies. That's my take. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, TBS DG, uh, Dr. Ngenya, for your, your presentation and for your highlights to the important issues. Now, from my side, yeah, uh, uh, I think um, I'm done. So I would like to welcome now uh, Mr. Charles Gashai to take over for the for the, the, the remaining session. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, moderator, for a job well done. And before uh, I thank you all for your participation and patience, I want to make uh, two announcements. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, this uh, kind of training and webinar uh, will have some, I believe, some impact, particularly on the SMEs, so that they can be able to realize uh, the benefits of uh, uh, implementing the standards that we are talking about to ensure health and safety. And so we are looking at uh, an, a situation where we are going to have uh, more certification uh, so that you can be able to be awarded either the national mark of quality or the African mark of quality. And if you are also dealing with sustainability standards, uh, because the award now is going sustainable, then you can be awarded with the Ecomark Africa uh, sustainable and environmental level. Now, the first announcement is that uh, we wish to welcome us all to the next uh, webinar, which will be held on uh, 25th June, and it will be co-hosted uh, with the uh, Shad. Uh, and then the theme for the webinar will be uh, the interdependence uh, between uh, trade, sustainable development, and national quality policy. So we want to welcome you all, and uh, we will alert you uh, when, when that time uh, approaches. The next announcement is that uh, we shall be having uh, the ASO General Assembly event. And I believe most of you uh, who are from the Stars Borders have received invitations for this uh, uh, event. And it will be held in DR Congo between 3rd and 7th July this year. And towards, uh, towards this, uh, those who will be participating or be attending the DIA, the General Assembly, and we will require visa on arrival in DRC. Uh, we are requesting you to kindly forward to uh, contact Mr. Philip Okungu, uh, a copy of uh, your passport, so that they can liaise with the DR Congo uh, for that purpose of, uh, to, to facilitate uh, that uh, visa on arrival when you reach there. Uh, and then lastly, just a minute. Yeah, and then uh, I just want to just show you uh, something that uh, TBS has been, uh, something TBS has done to promote SMEs. Uh, you can have a look at it. And I believe uh, when the presentations will be uh, sent to you, you can be able to, uh, to, to, to see more and also internalize on the various slides that have been uh, presented. And now lastly, uh, I want to thank uh, very much my co-host, Dr. Genya, uh, for co-hosting and also for his insightful uh, comments that has, uh, we will go ahead into uh, giving more information or and encouraging uh, the SMEs uh, in terms of even complying with the necessary standards and, uh, and their implementation. Uh, also, I would like to uh, thank you very much uh, the presenters uh, for their very informative uh, and interesting uh, presentations uh, that has kept us uh, uh, busy for the last uh, two or so hours. And then also uh, thank you very much to our participants. Uh, you have been very patient uh, and uh, you have also been participating in this uh, webinar, and uh, we thank you very much. The and then the technical team, uh, uh, that is technical team in uh, 
uh, ASO and also TBS who have made this uh, very much uh, available, uh, uh, has made this possible. Uh, without you, we could not have been able to achieve what I believe we have achieved. So uh, I want to thank you all and uh, wish you a very good, uh, I believe now is afternoon and evening for all of us. And as we say in Swahili, Asante sana, Mungu awabariki. Goodbye. 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 Asante. Goodbye. Asante sana. Thank you very much. So see you on 25th and also in DR Kogo, those who will be going. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.